Hi, welcome to this tutorial in my series on discrete random variables. And in it, what I want to show you this time is what is e of x? What do we mean by it? And how do we calculate it? Well, to answer this question, what I've got is a special die. It's a six-sided fair die, but instead of having the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 on it, what we've got is three faces with a 1, one face with a 2 and two faces with a 3. You can't see the one face with a 2 and the two faces with a 3, but let's say they're around the other side, OK? Now, suppose we were to draw up a probability distribution table, something like this for the random variable x. Let x be the random variable, the score on the die. And that score, illustrated by a small x, OK, for the observed value, could be a 1, a 2 or a 3. And we've got the probability here that our score on the die equals any of these observed values, x. So what's the probability, the chances of scoring a 1? Well, we've got three faces out of six that have a 1 on it. So that probability is going to be 3 out of 6. What's the probability of scoring 2? Well, to score a 2, we've got one face with a 2 on it. So that's got to be 1 out of 6. And similarly, to score a 3, we've got two faces with a 3 on it. So it's got to be 2 out of 6. Now suppose we looked at a particular table. A table on expected frequencies. Let's see what we mean by that. I've got the number of throws here that we do. And we can score a 1, 2 or 3 on this die. Now let's suppose we threw this die six times. According to our table of probabilities here, we've got a 3 out of 6 chance of scoring a 1. 3 throws in every 6, we're saying, will result in a 1. So if we throw it 6 times, we could expect to get 3 sixes. Similarly, to score a 2, there's one face in every 6 that gives us a 2. So 1 in 6 we would at times we would expect a 2. So it's got to be 1 there. And for the 3, it's going to be 2. Now, OK, these are expected frequencies. I'm sure if you threw this die six times, you wouldn't necessarily get three ones, one, two, two threes, OK, because things occur at random. You might get four ones, say, and two twos, and that would mean no threes. But this is what we would theoretically expect to happen. And if I threw the die, say, 12 times, 3 in every 6 results in a 1, so it must be 6 in every 12, would also result in a 1. 6 in every 12, so I would expect 6 1s. Similarly, to get a 2, 1 in every 6, if I throw it 12 times, must be twice as many, so I'd expect 2 here. And for the 3, instead of it being the 2 here, it's now going to be Four. And suppose I threw this die lots more times. Let's say 600. I've chosen 600 because nice number, because 6 goes into it. 3 in every 6 gives a 1. So in 600 throws, it's going to be 300. 300 we would expect to result in a 1. For getting a 2, I would expect it to be 100. And for getting a 3, I would expect it to be 200. OK, now, why have I done this? Well, normally we could work out what our mean would be if we've got a frequency table, the mean score. And if I was working out that mean score, let's just put it down here, that the mean, OK, how would I work out that mean? Well, if we took this row here, the 600 row, we'd need to find out what our total score was 
and share that, divide it evenly between the total number of throws we did, 600. So what would our total score have been if we threw the die 600 times? Well, we would have scored a 1 300 times. So that's going to amount to 300. But what I'm going to just write here is that we scored a 1 300 times. 1 times 300. And we'd have to add the total that we got from scoring a 2. Well, we scored a 2 100 times. So that's going to be a total of 200. That's the result we get when we do 2 times 100. So let's just write 2 times 100 instead of 200 there. And finally, the 3, the score of 3. We threw it 200 times, so that's going to amount in a total score of 600. OK, 3 times 200. Let's just put that in, 3 times 200. Now we need to share this, divide it evenly between the total number of throws, which was 600 in this case. Now I can rewrite this in a different way. Because I've got three terms on the top, all over 600, I can rewrite this as 1 times 300 and divide the, this term here by 600. I could put this over 600. And I could do that similarly for the other terms. So we've got 2 times 100 over 600 plus 3 times the 200 and put that over 600. Now look what happens. I could simplify this. I could divide 300 and 600, this fraction, by 100, top and bottom by 100. So that would cancel out those two zeros and those two zeros there. So I'd have 1 times 3 over 6. Similarly, I could do it here. 100, 600 gives me 1 over 6. And here, this would be 2 over 6. Let's just write that down again. What we've got is 1 times 3 over 6 plus 2 times 1 over 6 plus 3 times 2 over 6. And when we look at this, do you notice that what we've got here is the observed values 1, 2 and 3 that we've got in this table here. And we've got them multiplied by the probabilities of those observed values. 3, 6, 3, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 2, 6. So what we've got here is a way of working out the mean from a probability distribution table. Although we don't call it the mean, we should really call it the expected mean. OK, it's not the theoretical mean, so we'll just write that in here, the expected mean. We can just squeeze it in there. Expected mean. And we have a symbol for this. In statistics, we often call this E of the capital X, E of X. So E of X is the expected mean. And how do we calculate it? By multiplying all the observed values with their probabilities and totaling that up. So we get that E of x for a probability distribution table is equal to the sum of the observed values, little x, times their corresponding probabilities. And this is a formula that you need to remember whenever you're asked to work out E of x. OK, so what was E of x for our particular probability distribution? Well, if you work this out, 1 times 3 6, 2 times 1 6, 3 times 2 6, what you get is 11 6. 11 6 or 1 and 5 6. That's the expected mean, E of x, for our distribution table. So I hope you've got the idea how you work this out, OK, and what it means. OK, well, good luck in solving questions that ask you to find E of X for a discrete random variable.